As a way to encourage more improvements in the Boston Public Schools, there's a competition to show the most progress for being a school on the move. The winner receives a $100,000 prize named after the former superintendent, Thomas Paisant. This year's winner is the Conley Elementary School in Rosendale. The award is made by the education nonprofit Ed Vesters. Joining us as our guests are at Conley's principal, Joe Foley, and the executive director of Ed Vesters, Laura Perilla. Thank you very much for being with us. It's great to be back. I want to start with Laura. Uh, why did the Conley win, win this year? Well, Chris, as you know, it's an incredibly rigorous prize, and we first look to identify schools across the city in the Boston Public Schools that are improving incredibly rapidly, um, and then we invite those schools to apply. Conley was one of three finalists, and not only were they getting an incredibly rapid improvement rate, they were also outperforming their district peers, um, moving at a rate that's about 10 times faster than the average elementary school in Boston. And they were doing it with a very high need student population and that really set them apart. Jeff Foley, uh, tell me about the needs of these students and, and how this is different from even a typical Boston public school. So at the Conley School, we have a high percentage of students with special needs. So we're about, get roughly 40% of our students are students with special needs. These are students that have anything from behavior disorders to struggling with academics such as reading and math. And they're typically um, working at two to three grade levels below their peers. Yeah, and of course, uh, among the things that this prize concerns is, is a change in the school climate or culture. So uh, what was going on with that? Uh, so when I came in, it was really kind of a continuation of the previous principal's work. And there were a lot of things in place that were very successful. Uh, my job was to come in and kind of recognize those, those things that, that were working really well and figure out ways collaborate with teacher voice to figure out how we can make things better. Or what about uh, how effective the changes were? Because there must have been some sort of measure going on to see if this is really working. Exactly. So we're looking at schools that are improving more than 50% faster than the average uh, comparable BPS school over a five-year period. So it's not just one year up or a little bump in the test scores, but really significantly improved traction. And what we saw at the Conley is not just that they were, um, based on the data, getting that sort of improvement, but they were really digging in and working so effectively between and among teachers. So one of the things we've seen from prize winners over the years is a remarkable level of teacher collaboration, teacher ownership, willingness to do things differently, willingness to take on different roles. And this is a traditional Boston public school and the Conley teachers really set the bar for that and that's one of the reasons they won the prize this year. So, so explain how that works with, with, with teachers um, huddling around and, and getting more of the nuances. Yeah, so that teacher collaboration piece is key. Uh, whether you're a leader of a small school or a large school, I can't do this work alone. So it's really important that I have really good people around me to do that, to collaborate, to kind of figure out the complex ways of how we can solve teaching and learning to make sure all students are re reaching a high level. And that's through teach teacher collaboration. That's through teachers sharing their best practices, talking about the best way to reach these kids, literally and figuratively opening up their doors of practice. Now, I, I imagine in uh, less uh, inclusive times, if you had a student with a learning disability, that, that student would be in a separate world. Uh, you have an inclusive school now, and I imagine there are teachers who might say, I'm, I'm trying to teach this kid math, but there's certain that, that I don't understand about what's going on. I need someone else who, who can back me yeah, up. Exactly, right and we try to provide as many inclusive possibilities for, for our children as humanly possible. And as I said, going back to the collaboration piece, it takes that collaboration piece between the special education teacher as well as the general education teacher to figure out the best way to educate that, that child in need. What about the way the students relate to each other? There must be something going on there, too. Yeah, so that, you know, that, that climate that's conducive learning is extremely critical in, in every school, where we want teachers to spend more time teaching and less time you know, supporting students with social-emotional needs. I'm not saying our students aren't perfect. They're children. They do make mistakes, obviously. But generally speaking, our kids work really hard. They make really good decisions. And we as a school may maintain that culture of excellence, that culture of achievement, where all students can reach their academic potential. How, by the way, how, how does it feel that you're getting these results? Because I think uh, along with being a principal at the Conley, you have a family tradition at this school, I think. Yes, I do. So my mom went to the Conley, my aunt went there, so that was very exciting to be a part of this community as well. And it's really just about, as I said, it's really working together. And this, this prize was a tribute to our hard work, my hard work, the teacher's hard work, but especially the students' hard work. As Laura said, it was a very rigorous process and it was an honor to be recognized by Ed Vesters. Laura, tell me a little bit about uh, the two runner-up schools, because there's some good things going on there. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the two finalists this year, besides the Connolly, 
um, were Orchard Gardens, K-8 Pilot School in Roxbury. Um, this year was the first year that we saw um, some of the schools statewide and in Boston that had been named as level four turnaround schools. So three years ago, among the lowest performing 5% schools in the entire state. Um, in this year's prize selection, three of them were actually eligible to uh, compete for the prize, and one of them, Orchard Gardens, was a finalist. So their um, improvement rate over time was incredibly high, again, with a very high needs population, a school that used arts as a way of reinvigorating their school climate, um, which was really terrific. And then the other um, uh, finalist was the Urban Science Academy in West Roxbury, which um, is a high school serving a broad range of students. Two years ago, they were asked to take over um, a low performing school in their building, and they still got the kind of improvement that made them eligible for the School in the Move prize. So three impressive stories. One of the things that was really fun this year, um, as you know, the, in addition to Edvester's staff, the prize is awarded by a, this year an eight member selection panel, CEOs, judges, um, leading philanthropists, uh, um, a university chancellor, um, who visit all these schools, read all the proposals. Um, this year, one of the panelists, um, the, uh, uh, David Long, the CEO of Liberty Mutual, um, was so impressed that as a sponsor of the prize, they put an extra financial amount into the finalist prizes. They normally get 10,000. This year, both finalists got 25,000, and of course, the Conley got the $100,000 prize. Joe Foley, what do you plan to do with that money? So that's a great question. That's a lot of questions that my staff and families are asking. And, and one thing that we're really thinking about is capacity building, right? We don't want to spend this money in a one-time deal. We really want to make sure that we're building capacity to make sure we can continuously provide a world-class education for all of our children. Hey, well, thank you both very much. Joe Foley thank you from for the time. Comedy School and from the Investors' nonprofit, Laura Peril. We'll have more news in just a moment.